so that the trip would end cleanly, I mean completely, the way we expect things to end when they do, when a story is told and the past tense is used. I can imagine, for example, that we're out there still, Wisconsin Navy yachts cutting through the Upper Peninsula, passing Escanaba, skirting Lake Michigan, heading towards Sault Ste. Marie at the Canadian border. Driving that same red truck that is junked behind Henry's government house now, the truck I'd climbed as a kid and later red and itchy from the fiberglass of the cab scratched from my legs patches of prickly skin. It wasn't all that long ago, you know, my father set off and on that trip east whenever we recounted snippets of this sort of memory to him. You always make it sound as if it happened a long time ago. Then, a little later, to break a silence. How does the time pass so goddamn quickly? Well, in this instance, I gave them just that first sentence uh, on a piece of paper. It really did seem impossible that the trip would end. Cleanly, I mean, completely. The way we expect things to end when they do. When a story is told and the past tense is used. End of quote. That's all they got. So here's another member of the seminar. After they read it one time, the first word that comes to mind is dense. Then I ask them to read it a second time and write one sentence. Sounds like last week's comments relating to migration and that it is always ongoing. Um, then I ask them to read it a third time and write one paragraph. Here's what they wrote. A story has certain completeness. A trip or narrative needs a certain resolution, a clean or complete end before it can be told as a story. What constitutes the story? Stories can continue without resolution. Everyone's life, for example. But there are periods of clarity, crescendo, boredom, changes in the speed of passing hours that all need to be told. Is resolution needed? Is story or narrative confused with anecdote or punchline? Does a story have to have a point? They, they also read it a fourth time. So here's, and the fourth time they write in a stream of consciousness vein. So here's the fourth, after they read it a fourth time, what this, same, this seminar member wrote. There are certain moments where you feel like you are completing a journey leading up to a turning point. Emotions and states of mind even will change. A resolution is due. At some point, you deny the journey is going to end. You deny that there is something past it. That meaning afterwards is undefined. Denying that the moment of clarity, of bliss, will end. And you will have to wake up the next day and start the next story. There's a craving for creation and resolution. It's all artificial. The story could end now, as this is being read. It could finish at 2 p.m. It could finish whenever. Story or narrative and the fashion for it might just be over-rational, over-reductive, put in place for peace of mind. Healing may come through learning about our family's story. But is this resolution or is healing in the process of finding out? Maybe there is no such thing as resolution. It's just that we crave it and construct it nonetheless. Any, anything you think about that? Yeah. Riff on it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that that's really um, interesting. And uh, so 
I think that the, especially the the last um, part of it um, reminds me of my thinking anyway of um, of uh, the the title or that uh, tension that I was trying to talk about with the the title of the um, uh, between a simplification that would tend toward a resolution that might be potentially and you know, obviously not always and it depends on the scale and depends on how it's implemented and depends all of the <laughs> relations that are involved but potentially uh, a dangerously over rational um, sense or um, exclu uh, like an exclusionary um, narratives um, a narrative um, and uh, um, and 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 in a way of using that impulse towards res resolution to be a, a communicative device, um, but uh, but yeah, it, it's uh, it comes from the idea of the the actual physical journey and um, the passage, and uh, um, I think that uh, that's a it's a really useful way of, of thinking about. Um, of that uh, process, and I guess why I incorporated it in into the book is that uh, idea of that you know I start off with the the father he's building his house it's a carpenter's house it's a work in progress and uh, just this idea of um, just how nece necessary I think it, it is for the father and um, and uh, probably for all of us in, in different ways and in different passions to always have with our different passions to have. A sense of um, potential and of, um, of progress, and of the idea that there isn't going to be a final resolution. So that as much, yeah, I think that that tension is really important. The idea of striving for resolution, which is, which is <coughs> the only way that you can really uh, get some sort of sense of a satisfaction in pursuit of it. Because if we just admit it right now, okay, well, really, it's all about potential. It's all about progress. It's not about doing or getting any done well we would very soon lose our our um, our passion I think for um, but uh, but that uh, we need to have that sense of, of striving toward uh, goals and uh, real uh, concrete realizable goals but that uh, implicit to that striving is that also the necessity of the progression which I feel like that that passage really or the reflection on the passage really um, picked up on Questions, comments? I was thinking because you've got background writing prose and poetry, there are times where the, the, the story kind of really drives along, but then we kind of mm. almost slow down to a stop so you can you get those moments where the poetry can really be like surgery into a very fine <laughs> moment. So I, some, some of my reading my, the pace changed a lot and it kind of a little bothered me a little bit because sometimes I'd fly root through and then I'd re have to read a paragraph over and over again yeah. and I have to read, okay, that's the real focusing moment. Huh. It was inter interesting. interesting to see that um, interaction because yeah. there are moments we, we talked about a little bit about your use of grammar in the book because there's, there's, <laughs> there's lots of dashes and brackets and semicolons in places, so there comes these these sections where we kind of have to kind of read over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I wondered how that works in with your your sense of the the flow of the book. Well, it's interesting because I was going to say when we were talking before about uh, poetry and and uh, and fiction and the different the ways that I think of it as like I, I think poetry. Um, has this remarkable ability. I like that your your surgical um, uh, metaphor there, but um, I um, and that novel gives you the the sense or the uh, range to look at uh, to <coughs> relations and to, and and that the flow is is obviously. Although I don't know about the flow. Well, maybe I'll leave flow aside. Say relations and uh, specificity in a way between the, the two and I was going to go on um, to say too that I really I do think that uh, you know my ambition is to, to be able to do both of those mm -hmm. things with my writing and um, um, and so I think that yeah uh, that um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that it was disruptive at, at times but for me that really um, it, it uh, 
it is, I guess, a part of my, my ambition to be able to incorporate both. And I am a little bit, sometimes a little bit, depending on how it's done, but irked by um, uh, uh, reviews or um, the labeling of a, or a poetic novel. So I feel like we have this uh, label of like the poetic novel, especially in Canada, but what that means, and I feel like it's a pretty limiting sense of what, what that means, and I think it really is a limiting um, uh, sense of, or of what of, of both of those categories, poetry and novel, that are a little, um, and uh, um, because for me, I um, I guess I, I don't um, make a differentiation, like I don't, um, if, if, if by novel, by needing to clarify that something's a po poetic novel, I think what's at root there is that those novels are novels that are really interested in language and really interested mm -hmm. in, uh, um, in, in exploring language and exploring um, moments, relations, consciousness as is um, really in, in specific and in more um, minute ways rather than um, I, I suppose that how we've somehow come to, to think of, of novels as being a sort of sweeping flow or, or, of, um, and, and concentrating on story as you know as if um, as if that could be separated mm -hmm. from um, you know from from the language and from the, the investigation of those moments and of those consciousnesses and of those you know that that's so much a part of it so I feel that to make to make the distinction or you know maybe it maybe it's important maybe we just need to, to make it more um, uh, to 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 talk about poetic elements of not just uh, um, novels, but of all sorts of things that really examine, um, I guess, the, the craft. I mean, poetry, the word poetry to come from poesis to make, I feel like is really um, an important aspect uh, to think about and just to, to think about how, uh, yeah, that it, it is sort of a consciousness of the craftedness, I guess, of, um, of any work. and. Uh, and uh, so that, for me, I guess, I guess I so so I guess when I say I'm irked by the poetic novel, I'm irked by what I what I sense as a um, uh, a little bit of um, yeah of, of not really taking taking that to the to the level that I want it to go at. Like I do, I would agree. I would hope that my my novel is a poetic novel. Um, I, and uh, um, but I feel that when that term is used, that it's usually like a, a limiting term, um, uh, in the sense, uh, rather than really exploring the what potential um, approaching something with the idea of its craftedness, which is what I think a poetic approach or a poetic process can be, um, really means. If that makes sense. Well, except except like. Um, okay, someone who's always called, they always say, writes poetic novels is Anne Michaels, right? Mm -hmm. the fugitive, the yeah. fugitive pieces and that. But there is sort of a density to language, isn't it? Kind of a continuum. Uh, and so people find that to, to use such a term sort of puts it in a certain, as long as it's not dismissive, yeah. puts it on a certain yeah. Parameters. I do think, yeah. I mean, and, and oftentimes it is used for, you know, in, in, in good, good yeah. faith to yeah, try it, to it describe is, exactly right. what I'm saying. You know, right. yeah. But I, um, um, yeah. But I think that, uh, I think that the thing is, is that um, all writing's crafted, and there's yeah. always the crafted part, and so there's poetic elements in all writing, yeah. all, all kinds. But there of is, yeah, and there, or, there, there, or, or different uh, different kinds uh, of that, but I think that maybe what I'm, I'm getting at, or what's at root of the, the issue of using this term, is that unfortunately, I mean, that there, that there is a, um, a sort of fear in our general culture, even among literary about people, poetry. That's about what, poetry. So you're really yeah. getting at the dismissiveness yeah, of the term, exactly. that people won't pick it up to read yeah, because it's been called a poetic novel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, or at least that there's a this, there's a sense of um, that the poetic aspect is um, a um, an aspect that's not integral to the book and not integral to the story. 